Okay, so hi everyone. Thanks for coming to my presentation. My name is Xiao Dong, so I hear a lot of different pronunciations of my name, so I understand that, but eventually I decided to streamline that, so maybe I just go by XD. So please feel free to, feel free to call me that. So I'm a software engineer at Apple. Uh, I'm also an Airflow PMC member and uh, committer. The topic today is better support for using multiple namespaces with Kubernetes Executor. The target here is to share an interesting feature we added into Airflow earlier to help you use Airflow's Kubernetes Executor in a more flexible and also more secure way, as well as the motivations and a bit more details about it. So first, something about myself. Uh, originally, I'm from China. Then I moved to Singapore for education and work. I lived in Singapore for about maybe six years and made a lot of good friends there, like uh, I think Naku there. Yeah. So after Singapore, I lived in Switzerland for three years and last year I moved to US and now I stay in California. I started to work on Airflow since 2018. And when I was still working in Singapore, then I was offered the opportunity to become Airflow's committer in 2019, and then I became a PMC member in the end of 2020. Airflow is really a great community, and I would say it's like my second university. I have learned really a lot from it. I would definitely recommend you to try to contribute to Airflow, and especially to collaborate with the fantastic people in this community. So some fun fact about myself, uh, other than Working on Apache Airflow, I also deal with uh, actual Airflow physically. I fly paraglider, and uh, I don't think I'm a really good pilot, at least not yet. But I always try to fly in the safe way, and my target is one day if I travel back to Europe, I will be able to fly in the Alps, and uh, that will be awesome. So as you can see, I do spend a lot of time on Airflow, either this Airflow or that Airflow. So. Let's start with a simple overview at Kubernetes Executor itself. So Kubernetes Executor, it runs as a process uh, in Airflow's scheduler. It runs each task instance as a separate pod on a Kubernetes cluster known as a worker pod. So this is a, a bit different from, and let's say the scenery executor or the local executor. It's also different from Kubernetes pod, let's say operator, Kubernetes pod operator, so that is, I understand there is some confusion uh, for some people around this. So first, you can choose to run all your worker pods on a single namespace, and this is really uh, straightforward. And so you just need to ensure the role you use for your Airflow scheduler or your executor, it has a permissions in that namespace, right? Like to create a pod there, to monitor the pod there, or let's say to read logs from that pod, from that namespace, right? You need to ensure uh, they say the Kubernetes role you give to the scheduler has a permission to do that. Then, sometimes you may want to run your worker pods in different namespaces and uh, for different reasons. Maybe for easier management, maybe for better isolation, or maybe just for fun, whatever, right? But then a question will start to appear. A cluster role is required for the scheduler in order to run your worker pods in multiple namespaces. One example, as I highlighted down there, when you decide that you want to run your Kubernetes executor with multiple namespaces, what Airflow use is a Kubernetes client function list pod for all namespaces, right? It's all namespaces, not just the namespace like X, Y, Z that I want to use. So instead, Airflow will just try to do all the operations that it needs to do against all the namespaces, and eventually, resulting in requiring a cluster role. So this is a relevant configuration in Airflow's configuration file in Airflow version 2.5.3 or lower. So as you can see, it's stated a cluster role is required for the scheduler if you want to enable the multi namespace mod. And you may ask, what is wrong? I can just create a cluster role for that, right? So it's really easy, that's it. However, in some scenarios, I guess some of you may can maybe understand that, especially for folks who work with, let's say, more infrastructure limitations. Uh, this may become a problem, and sometimes it may be even like a blocker for using Airflow, right? But why? So 
let's take one step back. Normally, when you let's say watch a demo, right, on YouTube or whatever, or when you try to play with Kubernetes locally, or let's say you are a relatively small team where the Airflow team just handles literally everything, then you can be the owner or the admin of your Kubernetes cluster. Then, of course, you and your application can have the full flexibility to use the Kubernetes cluster, including to give any of your application like the cluster role. However, that may not always be the case in the real world, right? Sometimes it may be multiple users or even many users sharing a Kubernetes cluster. This may be common in some companies where like the infrastructure is managed by a centralized infra team, right? So I assume many of you are using Kubernetes at work. So, but may I know how many of you are really like the admin or admin of the cluster? Okay, quite a few, yeah. But I also assume some users are using Kubernetes, but you are not the admin. I know if any of you are like that case. Okay, a bit more, I would say. Yeah, I would say it's quite common, right? So I guess you understand this pain. So in such scenarios, most likely you will only get very limited permissions in limited namespaces, right? Not all the namespace. That's really some privilege, and I cannot imagine. And then in that case, you will never get kind of I mean, any kind of cluster level permissions. And because it's simply not safe to do so in your multi tenant environments, like today, I think in different talks I have been hearing, they say multi tenancy stuff, people really care about that, especially, I think, for enterprise environments, right? So one tenant having the cluster level permission means other tenants' security is compromised. And uh, I will say, personally, I will never be comfortable, or I will say, I will be very concerned. If I know other people on the same cluster is having any sort of cluster permission and having access to my namespace, I will be very unhappy about that. And even if for one single tenant, let's say, uh, let's say your team is just having this cluster, but allowing one application to have a cluster role is really unsafe as well. If this application is compromised, then as you can imagine, uh, as you can imagine, literally all your applications or the whole cluster is going to be exposed to very significant risk, right? So you will definitely want the isolation to be there. So in many enterprise environments where the airflow user normally just use the cluster, not manage the cluster, this limitation is really, really common. Then airflow users operating in such environments, what can they do? They are really this unable to use this multi namespace mod feature we have gone through just now, they will have to squeeze everything into a single namespace, which may not fit their use case best. Or maybe they can request like a dedicated Kubernetes cluster to their infra team, but this may be expensive, maybe inconvenient, maybe time consuming, or sometimes simply impossible. So these are exactly the pains, it's the pain points we were trying to resolve. So last November and December, I have been working on this with the community to see what is a better solution to do this. And eventually we have come up uh, with a solution. Uh, I would like to highlight a few folks from the community also it's a contributor to this pull request, like Daniel Standish from Astronomer, and also Yarik, and a few folks help you review as well. It's really big thanks to them. Uh, here it is. So in Airflow 2.6 and higher versions, other than the earlier configuration, as you can see, the multi namespace mod, right, it's still there. But now we have one more configuration, which is multi namespace mod, namespace least. It allows us to make use of multiple namespaces in a safer way and does not require a cluster role anymore. So here is a flowchart. Uh, we can use this to explain the idea. So when you specify a value for the multi namespace mod, right, as you had to do earlier, if it's false, which is on the right side, then of course Airflow just to consider the single namespace you have specified with another separate uh, configuration item, just like how it was working earlier. However, if it's true, meaning you want to use multiple namespaces to run your worker pods, it will need to check the new configuration, which is a which is a namespace list on the left side. If it's not specified, then it will just fall back to the earlier logic to check all the namespaces. Then 
of course, you will need to give the scheduler a class role, just like what you had to do earlier. However, if you specify the values for that, which should be a list of namespaces, right? That means, okay, I have a few namespaces and I want to run my Airflow worker pods in them. Then you only need the permissions and access to these certain namespaces only. You don't need a class role. So naturally, of course, you will only be able to run your worker pods in these limited namespaces. That's what you want anyway. So here is one example. I've put while you, uh, true for multi namespace mods. Meanwhile, I have specified a comma separated list for the namespaces, as you can see below. Namespace A, B, C. So now my scheduler will be able to manage worker pods in these three namespaces. And of course, I only need to give the scheduler a role having enough permissions in these three namespaces, like the permissions to create pod, monitor pods, like what the scheduler and the job watcher needs to do, right? So it's limited permissions I need in these limited namespaces. We do not need a class role for this anymore. So let's dive into the implementation details a bit more so that we can have a better idea uh, like what actually changed. First, the Kubernetes job watcher. That is a key component of the Kubernetes uh, scheduler, or let's say the executor. The Kubernetes job watcher is in charge of watching for the events happening to all the Airflow worker pods right, on the cluster. Previously, for each scheduler, we only need one job watcher. And this job watcher will look into either one single namespace or all the namespaces, depending on if you have chosen to use the multi namespace mod. But now, after the change, depending on your configuration, if you have chosen to use the multi namespace mod and only use and only use it for limited namespaces, instead of all namespaces, then we only we will have one job watcher for one namespace, right? For each namespace we are going to use. So this is like a change in terms of the how the software is going to run under the hood. But of course, this will be handled automatically, right? That does not mean you need to start multiple uh, job watcher. So that is handled automatically. Then inside the Airflow Kubernetes scheduler itself, we have to make a few changes as well to make it handle multiple namespaces in a more, let's say, in safer way like how we create the watcher, how we monitor the watcher health, and how we terminate the watcher, like how we terminate it safely, and eventually how we list the pods, because that's also a key functionality of the scheduler, and it's a key uh, component of the scheduler and the executor. So he, here is how we list pods now inside the Airflow Planetis scheduler. It's exactly following the flowchart we have described just now. First, we check the value for multi namespace mod, if it's true or false. If it's true, then depend we, we are going to check the namespace list, right? So depending on the values, different when it is client map function will be used to list the worker pods. Because when we don't need the cluster role, or when we don't use the cluster role, we actually cannot use the when it is client function list pod for all namespaces, right? That is not allowed if we don't have the cluster role. Eventually, we have to update the singleton class resource version. The resource version uh, singleton class, it has this attribute resource version. Previously, it's a string, and uh, that's because it only needs to handle, let's say, a single job watcher. But now this attribute is changed into a dictionary so that it can help us easily keep track of multiple job watchers, right? And these are the main changes to support this new feature. And we don't dive into each single piece here, but you are always welcome to look into the code changes uh, later and add your questions on GitHub or just reach out for any question you have. Let's look at this again. Now, if the Airflow user is setting up their Airflow application on Kubernetes right, properly, as we described it just now, other tenants don't have to worry about unexpected access to their namespace anymore. Right? If I'm running Airflow on that cluster, they don't have to worry, hey, this guy, this dangerous guy, is having like a cluster role, cluster permissions to my namespace. Right? They don't have to worry about this anymore. The same for applications. Even if one Airflow instance is compromised, of course, that's quite unlikely to happen, right? Like the whole community is paying a lot of attention to the security stuff for this project. 
It's unlikely to happen, but even if it happens, it will not compromise the cluster's security. So now we have more isolation that we desire when we use Airflow's Kubernetes executor. Now, here comes the last question. What can be the next state? Right? That is something I think I really want to discuss with more people to see what else should be added. We have Kubernetes uh, executor, which helps us run our workload on Kubernetes cluster, which is great. Of course, then security, and more security, and even more security. That's something we will never stop uh, pursuing. Maybe some effort should be made to enforce the security best practice when people are running Airflow with Kubernetes. For example, maybe using cluster roles should just be forbidden completely. Just like sometimes we are just not allowed to run root right, on Linux. That is something we should consider because uh, I think Kubernetes community or Kubernetes project itself, it does have a lot of security best practice, but I'm not really sure if we are following everything properly, especially some Airflow users. They may be expert in Airflow, but they may not be expert in Kubernetes. Then inside the project, what can we do to help them enforce better practice, right? That should be considered. Then now we also have Celery Kubernetes Executor. I'm not sure if all of you know that. That can help us distribute our workloads between Kubernetes and Celery, depending on what queue you are using for your uh, Airflow or for your DAX. We can actually also use a local Kubernetes executor to do the same, but distribute your workload between local executor and Kubernetes. So it's quite flexible. But what should be the next step to make Airflow even more flexible, hence more powerful, right? That is something we should keep, um, keep thinking. One idea may be one single airflow scheduler to schedule jobs on multiple Kubernetes clusters, right? This, I'm not sure if this, this can be done now. Maybe, maybe it can be done in some way now, but more or less hype, I would say, even if it's possible. I, I have never seen anyone do this. Uh, if you know, please let me know, and I would really would like to learn something from it. And uh, this one, even more, what other options do we have? I don't have an answer here. This is an open question for everyone, including to myself. Like the question mark there, it can be the next popular infrastructure, just similar to Kubernetes, or it can be some new service or application or software that Airflow can integrate with. And that, I mean, there can be quite many possibilities depending on how the industry is evolving, right? And this can be definitely something uh, or some opportunities the different people from this community can collaborate on. And uh, I do feel very excited about that. So that's everything I'd like to share today. Uh, and again, thanks a lot for the time with me today. And uh, please enjoy the rest of your time at this year's Airflow Summit. Thank you so much.